The Imperial Russian Army was one of the largest armies that the world has ever known, reaching approximately 50 million enlisted men during the First World War. Today, much like our previous videos, we will be discussing and dissecting the Imperial Russian Army. The Imperial Russian Army, or the Ruskaya Imperatorskaya Armaya, was the mainland force branch of the Imperial Russian military from the establishment of the Russian Empire under Peter the Great in 1721 until its dissolution in around 1918. The army relied heavily on its conscription throughout its time and hardly ever went under one million men active at any given time during its existence. In the 1850s, the Russian army consisted of around 900,000 regular soldiers and approximately 250,000 irregulars, generally made up from the ranks of Cossacks. Nevertheless, the period we'll be focusing on for this rank list is the late 19th to early 20th century, aka the Proto-World War I era. Now, the most common idea of the army of Russia during this era would be, well, a shambles. Equipment was outdated, tactics were brutal and unrealistic in their lofty goals, and commanders were less than competent. Some of this is true, and the Russians had just lost a war to the Japanese, humiliating them, though using tactics that were very common throughout Europe during the era. Their equipment was lacking, and they barely just come to grips with the idea of enhanced communication, such as Morse code. Weaponry-wise, the Russian army was, well, well, not too bad in general fact, the Nagant model of weaponry was extremely popular. The commanders were not all incompetent of course, with generals like Alexei Brusilov being truly good commanders, leading an army plagued by ethnic divisions, language barriers and the hatred amongst the classes. It did not help that the Tsar, who was vastly inexperienced for his role, was the commander in chief, though these ideas are not entirely unique to Russia, the Austro-Hungarian army had the same flaws during the era. Firstly is the General Field Marshal. Now you're probably thinking that this is a German rank and well you're correct. The Germanic regions had a strong influence on the Russian Imperial Army's military system during its creation. The Tsar as well as other important individuals had the rank, which included Mikhail Kutuzov and Joseph Graf Zyredetsky, the Austrian Marshal. Under the direction of the Supreme Commander, who was the Tsar, in collaboration with the Minister of War, the role's responsibilities was, well, Commander-in-Chief of the Army. The Royal Emblem was featured on the shoulder straps, which had a double intertwined Marshal's baton behind it, and could be identified for this rank. Nextly is the rank of the General of the Branch, or in Russian, General Rodovoysk. However, it would be renamed based on the holder's army branch, such as the General of the Infantry, General of the Artillery, and General of the Cavalry, and, well, Adjutant General, and so on. The job would frequently command an area army, political office, chief of staff, or some other roles. The insignia's epaulets would have a solid gold zigzag pattern with red border trimming. The Lieutenant General, or in Russian, General Lieutenant, was the second lowest rank that a general officer could hold. The job would have held the position of command over a corps or a larger division, depending on the branch of service, and the insignia's epaulets would have the same solid gold zigzag pattern and red border trimming, but in this case, hold three silver stars. Lastly was the rank of Major General, or General Mayor in Russian, and it was the lowest officer rank that a general officer could hold. The job would have held a position of command over a division or a brigade, and the insignias would be the same as the lieutenant general, but in this case hold two stars. The rank of colonel, or in its distinctive Russian, Polkovnik, was the most senior of the staff officer ranks and held a position of command over a particular staff office or a regiment. It could be recognised via the golden shoulder strap, which held two crimson bars down each side and along the border. The Lieutenant Colonel, or Pod Polkovnik in Russian, was the second highest staff officer rank that an officer could hold, and it granted the leadership of a specific staff office, regiment, or a battalion, and it was easily identified as the, well, almost identical to the Colonel's rank insignia, but in this case holding two stars. Lastly was the rank of Major, or in Russian Mayor, which was the lowest staff officer rank and was abolished in 1884. The role held leadership over a battalion or a specialist company, and it was easily identified as the exact same insignia as the Lieutenant Colonel and the Colonel, but holding two stars. The Captain, or the Capitan in Russian, was the highest of the company officer grade of ranks, and it was granted the leadership of the company. It was easily identified by the golden shoulder strap with a singular crimson vertical red band down the middle. The Staff Captain, or in Russian, Stabs Kapitan, was the rank that was equivalent to a junior captain or a junior company leader in the Russian army. It was easily identified as the exact same insignia as the captain, but instead holding four silver stars. 
The Russian Imperial military, like the Soviet military, maintains a similar system for the lieutenant or junior officer ranks. The lieutenant or porochik was first, followed by the second or junior lieutenant podporochik. They were usually in charge of a platoon of varied numbers. They were identified by the same golden strap as the captain, but holding three or two stars. The warrant officers were the ranks of Praporshik, Zaryad Praporshik, and Pod Praporshik, hopefully I pronounced those correctly, which roughly meant the warrant officer, middle warrant officer, and the junior warrant officer, respectively. The responsibilities were comparable to those of a sergeant major, but they worked more closely with a company officer. They were often in charge of a platoon, or more commonly a squad of troops, and their position served as a vital connection link between the officers and the enlisted men. Like the superiors, the warrant officer was identifiable by a golden shoulder strap with a single crimson red band down each side and a single silver star in the middle. A crimson shoulder strap with a single golden vertical band down the middle and a silver star distinguished the middle WO, and a crimson shoulder strap with a single golden vertical bar down the middle distinguished the junior WO. <laughs> The rank of Feldwebel was taken directly from the Germanic rank structure and it could be thought of as well a sergeant major, and this role was to command, well, a squad of troops. They would also be the key line of communications, much like the warrant officer, between the troops and the officers serving under them. It was easily identifiable by the golden shoulder strap with a singular crimson horizontal band along the upper portion of the shoulder board. The Imperial Russian Army's second highest sergeant rank was the Starshi Unto Offizier, although it was not immediately translated as sergeant or senior sergeant, it could be interpreted as such. Depending on the branch of duty, they would most often be in charge of, well, a squad of troops or a battery of artillery. The crimson shoulder strap with the triple golden horizontal stripes around the upper half of the shoulder board made it easy to spot. The Mladshi Unteroffizier was the lowest sergeant rank within the Russian army, and depending on the branch of duty, they would most often be in charge of a squad of troops. It could be roughly translated to be a sergeant or a junior sergeant. The crimson shoulder strap with double golden horizontal stripes around the upper half of the shoulder board made it easier to spot. Yefreiter was the lowest non-commissioned officer rank within the Imperial Russian Army and it held little of any command over anything but could be indirectly translated to as a lance corporal or a private first class. The rank was commonly used also within the Soviet Army during its Stalinization era until its dissolution. Crimson shoulder strap with a single golden horizontal stripe across the upper half of the shoulder board made it easy to spot. The rank of Ryadavoy, or private or soldier, was the lowest ranking person within the Imperial Russian Army and it held no position of command at all, and made up a vast number of the 15 million soldiers during the First World War, of which eventually 12 million would be killed or disappeared. The conscripts held this rank as well, and the rank would be identifiable by its singular, crimson, very bland shoulder insignia.